the majority of heat that we need in our homes tends to be for heating, so heating in the radiators, and particularly it gets really cold in northeast winters. And over the last couple of weeks, that heating has started to be used again, keeping us nice and warm as the temperature has dropped coming into autumn. And the efficiencies of our heat pump in the last few weeks has actually been really high, averaging an efficiency of 376% or a COP of 3.76, which is great. Now we are talking. So for every kilowatt hour of electricity over the last month, we're getting nearly 3.8 kilowatt hours of heat. But there are several months a year where we don't need any heat in our radiators for comfort at all. And over the summer, we just need the heat pump to give us hot water for showers, baths, hand washing and washing up, all that kind of stuff. So how does a heat pump do it? Well, it does this by filling up an insulated hot water tank. I don't know if you can remember your airing cupboard from when you were really young. You can imagine that storing water in a hot water tank just like that might be a bit wasteful. Well, the hot water tanks that we have with our heat pump aren't really like those big old hot water tanks with really warm airing cupboards. It's not really like that. I mean, old tanks used to give off loads of heat. You keep your towels in that cupboard so they're nice and warm when you're ready, when you want to use them. Or you put your jammies in there just to warm up before bed. Well, a modern tank, you barely notice the warmth being lost from it. So a heat pump storing water in a hot water tank could be a really efficient way of making hot water. We could take heat from the really warm summer air. We could use a little bit of electricity to concentrate that heat using the heat pump. And then we could store it in this really well insulated water tank. So how has our heat pump done over this summer? We've got meters on the electricity supply to the heat pump and also a heat meter measuring how much heat it delivers to the hot water tank. So what do we see? Well, looking at the data between the middle of May and the third week of September, the kind of time when our heating systems started taking the edge off the cold weather, we used 195 kilowatt hours of electricity and this delivered 639 kilowatt hours of heat, an efficiency of 321% or a copper 3.21. And um, we have our, uh, an octopus uh, tariff, uh, the agile tariff, and our electricity cost over that period of time was only 19.2 pence per kilowatt hour, which is kind of low during this last year of energy crisis. So our costs for heat or for hot water over the summer was only 37 pounds and 44 pence between May and September. Thanks, Octopus. So let's just make some assumptions about what we're comparing against. If we assume that the water tank was 90% efficient, so it, it stored 90% of the heat that was put in it, then we really used 575 kilowatt hours of heat for our hot water and the rest was, was wasted. Let's assume that. If this heat was delivered by a combi boiler at an efficiency of 92%, which is fairly reasonable, that would have used 625 kilowatt hours of fossil gas. Um, we actually still have a gas connection to our hub, so our, we do have a price that we would have paid for gas for heating as well. Um, and with Octopus this summer, it would have been about 10.2 pence per kilowatt hour until July, and then, then 7.4 pence per kilowatt hour after that. So let's imagine that we still had a fossil gas boiler and let's just give it at the lower price of 7.4 pence per kilowatt hour. This would be providing the same hot water uh, as our heat pump has done, but it would have cost us 46 pounds and 25 pence. So a heat pump with the agile tariff from Octopus Energy saved us about nine pounds over the summer, win. Plus the standing charge if you did manage to get rid of that gas connection as well, which at 27 pence per day really does add up as well as the monetary savings, the gas boiler to give that much heat would have emitted 115 kilograms of CO2, whereas the heat pump emitted just over 40. So we've had a 65% reduction in emissions as well as a small saving. I mean, in reality, we barely use any energy over the summer. So these costs are a little bit red herring. So what else could we be thinking about? Well, a heat pump works in providing all the hot water we, we needed between May and September and all the heat we need for the rest of the year. But heating water over those summer months with the really warm summer air 
was actually a, a lower, a slightly lower efficiency than providing heat during the colder weeks that we've just gone into in autumn. So over the summer, we had an efficiency of 321% versus 376% so far in October. And that doesn't really make sense. Surely heat pumps will be more efficient at higher outside temperatures. Well, the difference is that it takes a heat pump running at a higher temperature to heat hot water than it does on a weather compensated heating circuit. So to get a hot water in a tank up to 47 degrees every day, the heat pump has to run above 50 degrees C in the coil in the heating tank. And this is actually quite high and it's much higher than the 35 degrees C we might need on a cool October morning. So even though the outside air has more heat to extract, it's storing more heat, the heat pump needs to work harder to get to a high temperature to store the hot water. But it can do it, can get the water up to that high temperature, and it really can heat water to whatever temperature you need. Which brings us on to a little thing called Legionella. That's a bacteria that can grow in warm water and it risks giving you Legionnaire's disease, which is a respiratory infection that can be pretty serious. And with a combi boiler, without any stored water, we have a much lower risk of Legionella growth. And then with a water tank, with water stored at 45 or 47 degrees C, we tend to think that there is a risk of Legionella growth. A heat pump deals with this through a weekly pasteurization cycle, lifting the water above 60 degrees and killing off all the nasties. And that is how our heat pump was set up at first. But I've actually changed the settings, partly inspired by this video from Heat Geek, where Adam from Heat Geek talks through what Legionella risk really is. So I've made the decision that because we have a fairly small tank and because we use most, if not all the water every day for everyday normal life, the turnover rate of fresh water keeps us from growing too much bacteria. And then once a month or so, usually when the wind is blowing and our octopus agile tariff goes negative, I lift the temperature in the tank to above 60 degrees, but only once a month or every six weeks rather than every week. And this, I think, means that the heat pump has been more efficient or it's contributed to contributed it to be being more efficient than last year. 4% efficient. And this is a win, although 2022 and 2023, both years used less than 200 kilowatt hours of electricity over the summer. So it doesn't make that much big, bigger difference. And most heat pumps will also come with an immersion coil that can boost water temperature when you need it. And this would be a lower efficiency than just working with the heat pump, but it means you can heat the water up quicker if you ever ran out in the tank. Which I guess brings me on to the last point that we should make about hot water and a heat pump, which is planning. In, I guess, another slight change to how we do things at home in using a heat pump from using a boiler, we now plan a bit more as to how we're using hot water. If we have people to stay, I might lift the temperature of the stored water so that it lasts a little bit longer and inc maybe increase the hot water, the, wa the water schedule so that it's always replenishing the tank if during, during the kind of times we might shower. Or if one of us particularly wants a really hot bath or we have a big load of washing up to do, we might plan to preheat the hot water. I mean, everything is possible with a heat pump, but sometimes it means a bit more planning ahead. And we have that immersion coil if we haven't managed to think ahead to give us a little bit of a boost. Okay, that is life with a heat pump over the summer. Low cost hot water, low emissions hot water, and no complaints.